Hi everyone, today we're going to be going through how to render out a polygon asset into an icon in the same style as the icons from the interface UI packs. So we'll be primarily using Unity, Photoshop, and there's also a plugin we use called HBAO, which is an ambient occlusion solution. It really adds to the quality of the final icons, but there are other ambient occlusion solutions out there. This one's just one of the best. First thing we're going to be doing is in Unity, we're going to be checking your project settings. The way these are rendered out is using the default render pipeline with everything cranked up to ultra. So we've got eight times multi-sampling, anti-aliasing, we've got shadows at very high, shadow protection that's stable. One thing to note is that the final image render is going to be pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to the game view. So any artifacts, for example, shadow artifacts or anti-aliasing artifacts or ambient inclusion artifacts, you'll see it in the game view and it'll carry through to the final render. So you might want to do things like play with shadow cascades or shadow distance to try and clean those issues up before you render out. Once you've updated your ability settings, the next thing is to sort of set up a little render scene. What I've got here is just a standard perspective camera with a very flat field of view of 10 and set to deferred rendering because otherwise you may get artifacts in your alpha channel in your final render. This is where we add our HBAO plugin that I mentioned earlier. So I'll toggle this on and off so you can see the difference it makes. You can see it really brings out the little nooks and crannies, adds those shadows in all the sharp corners and just doubles the quality of the image. My settings for that, everything's pretty obviously set to very high, as high as possible, because this is a render, and then it's quite a tight radius for the ambient occlusion. Also on this camera, you can see there are post-processing layers that are turned off. I have used them in some of the interface icons, but in this case, these guns from the military pack are gray, and that's the example we'll be using, so I'll keep them off, and that's pretty much it for the camera. Then I've got one game object I just call objects. That's where I'm going to be chucking in our example. And you can see there's another couple in here. And then within that is, is a lighting rig. This game object is where I've set the transform and hopefully pause and get these values. So once that's set up, you should be able to drag in any of the polygon prefabs and it should give them a nice orientation to start with. So to show that off, I'll bring in the RPG from the polygon military pack. Just within prefabs weapons, I'll grab the RPG and chuck it in that game object. You can see it's already got a pretty good angle and I just need to scale it up a bit, uh, reposition it and we should be good to go. The other thing that makes this look kind of slick is the lighting rig. So I'll toggle that on and off so you can see what that does. You can see it's pretty flat without it. We've got five lights in the lighting rig. I do have a couple of lighting rig variants to produce the interface icons. Some of them, the note, have these point lights, which are sort of blue on the top left and pink on the bottom right. They add a bit of volume to some of the polygon objects. But in this case, for these gray objects, they tend to flood the color and take away from the gray. So in this case, I'll, I'll keep these off. So we're really only dealing with three lights. We'll start with the main directional. This one comes in from front, top left. It's got a slight whitish orange to it. The hex is FFEED7, set to very high resolution shadows, soft shadows. It's got a bit of intensity and hopefully you can pause and grab these other values if you want. The next light is a rim light coming in again from the top left. This one's pure white, it's got no shadows on this one. An intensity of two, and then the rotation of values. So that kind of starts to flesh out the volume of these objects. Then the last one is kind of a backslash under light. Again, it's pure white, it's a directional, again, no shadows set. Intensity 1.4, and then the rotation. So that's it for the lighting rig. Like I said, there's also these volume point lights to add a bit of color to some of the objects, but again, in this case, we'll keep them off. The next step is rendering out this object into an image. And for that, we'll be using the Unity Recorder. It should be standard in later versions of Unity. If not, you should be able to install it via the package manager. But to access it, it's Window, General, Recorder, Recorder Window. What we want to be doing is adding an image sequence, but just recording a single frame of that sequence. And we'll exit play mode once we've captured that image. You can see our main camera is plugged in and our resolution is set to 8K. It has to match the game window, so you just got to make sure your game window is also set to 8K. Again, you don't have to go that high, but I find that extra resolution really helps smooth out any of the aliasing that you might be capturing. And we just crank that right down back to 1024 by 1024 for the final icon. The other important thing to note is it should be a PNG and this include alpha checkbox needs to be ticked, otherwise you don't get an alpha channel. So then you just set up an output directory, just got one called test, we hit start recording and 
it should spit us out one single frame and we can open up that folder and I've got a couple of test ones in here but this is our resulting image if I zoom in you can see there is some aliasing again that's why I capture it quite high resolution and then shrink down so for the next step we'll be going into Photoshop so I'll load that up now here we are in Photoshop I've loaded up my printed icons Photoshop document and to show you what we'll be adding in this last step it's this strong top left bluish rim light I did experiment with creating a rim shader in unity because a lot of the polygon meshes are hard normals you don't get great results so I found that the better option is just to add it in Photoshop so sort of fake it let's bring in our image that we rendered first thing to do is just crop it down so I'll hold down control and click on the layer icon and then image crop and then I'll just drag that into our example PSD and you can see it's coming at quite high resolution I'll sort of bring it down a bit and then I like to convert it into a smart object from here so that I can keep a little bit of resolution handy if I need it so we'll position that kind of in the same area as the example one but basically it just needs to be fairly centered then the next step is to add this fake rim so that's comprised of two inner shadow layers top one is set to normal blend mode with 30 percent opacity and it's this blue 6fb0 fc is the hex and it's coming in from top left 120 degrees and you can pause and get these distance values uh, and then there's another inner shadow on top of that you can press plus to add another one and this one's set to additive so basically you've got a normal blue with some opacity and then an additive blue on top of that to really punch that blue out and this one's a slightly whiter blue, D1E6FF is the hex, and then the other values are the same. And this is also where you would potentially add a drop shadow if you want all your icons to have shadows. The interface pack the icons are without shadows, and then I've added component shadows using a Unity shadow component, but that's a bit more expensive, so you might want to add your shadows at this point. We won't, we'll leave them off for now, but all I'm going to do is copy that layer style that I took you through uh, onto our new image and that's what we get so I like to test it against a bright green to make sure that there's no artifacting or fringing around the edge sorry one thing to note is that this is 1024 by 1024 I like to spit them out at that size and then potentially shrink them down in unity below that but it just depends on the needs of your project so that's the final result it does have a few steps a couple of programs but once you've got it set up you should be able to punch through a bunch of, for example, weapons pretty rapidly. If there's any issues or things that are hard to follow, let me know in the comments and I can amend or update this tutorial. But hopefully you're able to follow along and yeah, look forward to seeing some of your own meshes turn into icons and mixed and matched in amongst the other interface icons. Uh, thanks for watching along.